Oh. Okay. Um, so I will invite my colleague speakers to also invite, uh, sorry, introduce themselves. So at the moment, I have um, Elikem who will introduce himself. Okay. Okay. Good evening. Yeah, my name is Elikem Chachucholi. Um, I'm the Speaker of Parliament appointee for the Supernation Hall. Thank you. Okay. Um. Thank you, Right Honourable Elikem. Uh, Judy, Right Honourable Judy has just left. Um, this platform. I think she'll be joining us soon. So, Right Honourable. Still here. Um. This is... Oh. Okay. Ah. Uh, sorry. <laughs> okay. Um... So, um, can you introduce yourself? Uh, my name is Judy Mason. I'm the um the Speaker of Parliament for the University Hall House of Medical Students. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Right Honorable Jamis and Jude. And if Right Honorable himself can also introduce himself, that would be nice. Um, I am Right Honorable Eric Kamu, the Speaker of the 19th Parliamentary Council of UCC. So I guess I should also introduce myself, right? Yes, please. Then you proceed with um, your presentation. I, I I think after my presentation, you can leave some welcome address and maybe purpose, and I'll proceed from there. Okay. Can you come again? So, after my introduction, you can proceed to give the welcome address and purpose of gathering. Okay. So, I'm Jones Omega Shiviglu. I'm the Speaker of Youth Impact Parliament and also the Chairman of the National Association of Student Speakers Ghana, which comprises of SRC speakers nationwide, of all SRCs and Student Parliament House. Your right, Honorable Speaker, is a member. Thank you very much. Okay. I welcome you all to um, our first capacity building seminar, which happens to be online because we are in the vacation. Yesterday, I made mention of this being more of a pre-capacity building because we are hoping that when school reopens, we'll continue with um, these activities. This has become very important for us to, it has become very important for us to have this program because looking at um, the nature of the parliamentary councils that we have in the JCRC and even in the university itself as on the SRC level at large, um, we will have to train people on a lot of things, not just how to preside over house, but leadership as a whole. After here, we are expecting that leaders, as in the speakers, will go back and then also train people. So that's the major reason that we are here. Yesterday, I made mention and then introduced the speakers with the, with the topics that we'll be speaking on, and today, we have Right Honorable Jones, Amega, um, Amega Shiv, Shiv. Um, can you I don't get the name right? Yeah, right Honorable correct. Jones, in a minute, who, who will be speaking to us concerning uh, the speaker, Pilot of the House. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for inviting me on today's uh, meeting for me to briefly speak on um, the topic for today's program. It is the speaker, the pivot of the house. As I said, I'm Jones and I'm And with 
NASDAQ student speakers, what we do is to build capacity for our comrades and colleagues speakers to help them share their house with standard parliamentary practices. So that is basically extension of what I'm doing here uh, under the permission and invite of Right Honorable Alex Dim, who is the Speaker of the 19th Parliament of UCCSRC. I'm grateful for the opportunity. So let's go straight to business. I'm just briefly going to touch on some components with respect to the Speaker and why he's the pivot of the House. Now, um, we first have to talk about the basic uh, issue when it comes to speakership. You know very well that the speaker is the leader of a, a legislature. So we first have to know what a legislature is. A legislature is basically a lawmaking body for an organization or a republic or a country or a state. That body is responsible for making laws, exercising oversight responsibility on executive authority. And it serves as the representation of the people because it is composed of political represent representatives from political uh, demarcations called constituencies. They form a chamber, which is the legislature, and it's headed by a speaker. Now, the actual term, which is universal, is legislature or legislative chamber. The term parliament is just the name for legislatures. We have national assemblies. We have Senate, we have Chamber of Deputies, we have Congress, House of Representatives, and then all those general assemblies, county assemblies, and then all those. They are all names. So the name, the name parliament, the term parliament is just a name for a legislature. And even a legislature can be in three forms the unicameral legislature, the bicameral legislature, and the tricameral legislature. Unicameral legislature is a legislature with only one chamber, one house. And the bicameral legislature, obviously, is a legislature with two chambers, that is two houses. Our site examples, we also have tricameral legislatures, that is three houses, but that is not common and I think it has been stopped. So a unicameral legislature is the one that only one chamber performs the duty of the, of, of the legislature. That is the end of it. And a bicameral, there are two different chambers with two different compositions. And I basically, it is different people who are there. There is no duplication of membership because the reason for having two different chambers is to have two types of people with different perspectives to scrutinize the same document. So what is the reason of having duplicated membership, of having the same person at the lower house and the same person at the upper house? It doesn't help that way. So basically, let me, let me kindly mute my phone. Um, okay. Very good. Now, you may want to ask, um, what are the likely technologies and which examples do I have? Ghana, for instance, is a unicameral legislature, and the name of our legislature is Parliament, headed by Speaker, with two deputy speakers elected from among members of parliament, but the speaker is not a member of parliament. That is the legislature of Ghana. Let's go to 
Togo. Togo has the legislature called Chamber of Deputies. And it is equally headed by a speaker. Let's go to Nigeria. Nigeria has a bicameral legislature. That is two chambers. The name of the bicameral legislature is National Assembly. And the National Assembly has House of Representatives headed by a speaker elected from an among members, a found deputy speaker, and representatives making the house. About 360 of them, I'm sure. So that is the lower chamber or the House of Representatives. And then they have the Senate headed by a president with one deputy president and with a number of senators from senatorial constituencies. Okay. Nigeria has a lot of states and each state has three senators. Okay. So Nigeria as well is a federation. The state government and then the federal government. Each state government, per their constitution, has a legislature called House of Assembly. So if the state is called River State, their legislature will be River State House of Assembly. And it is also headed by a speaker elected from and among the members of that house. Let's go to Kenya. Their legislature is called Parliament. And then they have the lower chamber to be called the National Assembly, headed by a speaker not elected from among members. He can be elected, but he is not a member of parliament. And then he has um, a deputy. And then the, the members. Then they also have a senate. But their senate is not headed by a president, but rather headed by a speaker. I told you it's all about terminology. It's all about the terminology. So let's get this right. In Kenya, their senate is headed by a speaker. And then they have senators part of it. Let's go to um, South Africa. South Africa, they have a bicameral legislature. And it's called parliament. Their legislature is called parliament. And in that parliament, they have two chambers. The National Assembly has a lower house, headed by a speaker. And the upper house, called the National Council of Provinces, headed by chairman. That is the composition of what? Um, South Africa, their legislature. Let me come back to Kenya. They have... Um, their states are called counties, and each county has a county assembly headed by a speaker as well. Let's go to another example. Uh, Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. They have House of Representatives headed by a speaker, and then a Senate headed by a president. Let's go to United States of America. United States of America has 50 states and I'll speak on the state legislatures and then the national legislature. The national legislature is called Congress. It's not called Parliament, so it's called Congress. And it is made up of the House of Representatives headed by a speaker elected from and among them, about 435 seats, I'm sure. And then they have the Senate. The Senate is actually headed by the Vice President of U.S. And the vice president in the Senate is called president. And they have 50 states. Each state presents a male and a female as senators. So that is it for USA. Now, each state, for them, as compared to Nigeria and Kenya, that their, their states and counties only have unicameral, and then the national has bicameral. In USA, each state has a bicameral legislature. Some of them, some of the lower houses are called House of Representatives, some of them are called General Assembly. And some of the upper houses of each of the states are called Senate, and some are called 
with different names. Now let's go to the Mother of Parliament. The Mother of Parliament is the Parliament of United Kingdom. United Kingdom has two houses. The House of Common. And it is composed of elected members of parliament, headed by a speaker called the Common Speaker, with one deputy. Then let's go to the House of Lords, which is the Upper House. The Upper House is headed by the Lord Speaker, and it is composed of lords. Baroness, Dukes, Bishop, then all those. The only upper chamber, naturally, the upper chamber is smaller than the lower chamber. But in the case of United um, Kingdom, their upper chamber is around 800 lords, and their lower chamber is around 650 commons. Let me see members of parliament yeah so that is it and then we can have, we have a lot of examples so these are the names of legislatures all around let me just cite example with respect to SRCs. SRCs. when you go to atu ug upsc their student legislature is called general assembly when you go to KNUSD, UCC, and then some of the private universities, the ISRC legislatures are called parliamentary council. When you go to HTU, you go to UHAS, and then some other student legislatures, their legislature is called parliament. When you go to UMAT, they call their own legislative assembly. When you come to University of Education, they call their own local assembly. So it's all about the terminologies. And this is all legislature. Now, the terminology we we'll best associate ourselves will be speaker and then parliament. Now you may ask, who is the speaker of parliament? The speaker of parliament is the head of the legislature, the chairman of the house and the leader of that arm. Okay. That is the Speaker of Parliament. The Speaker of Parliament, in all cases, is seen as a neutral figure. Because with respect to Republican Parliament, they have party representations. Even if the Speaker is from a political party, obviously, he has to be neutral in the performance of his duties. And due to that, he loses his original vote. And in some chambers, the speaker does not have a casting vote either. A very good example is the Parliament of Ghana. The speaker does not have original vote and casting vote. You may ask, what is original vote? What is casting vote? Original vote is when we have normal voting. An original vote allows you to participate in it. And a casting vote, that is the vote that when there is a tie, you can cast your vote to break the tie. That is a casting vote. In some jurisdictions, the speaker does not have both votes. But in other jurisdictions, the speaker has a casting vote. When you go to the, um, the House of Commons in the UK Parliament, the speaker has a casting vote. Yes, so when there is a tie, he can cast a casting vote because he's an MP. The speaker is an MP. So the Speaker of Parliament basically inaugurates the House and dissolves the House. Chair sittings presides over plenary sessions. You see, Parliament at the Republican level, the major work of Parliament is not a plenary session. It'd be like, what is plenary sessions? All we know is seeing them sit. Yes, the chamber that they sit in and when they are performing their duties by sea, those are plenary sessions. They have committee sessions as, as well. In, 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 in um, South Africa, they stream their committee sessions. Yes, but for Ghana, it's only the plenary session that we stream. 
So is the speaker that chairs and presides over the plenary session. For committee sessions, is the committee chairs. And basically, the committee chairs perform the the, the standing order is applicable at committee levels. Okay. So they also preside over committee meetings and then they bring whatever reports and investigations they have. So the plenary session for debate, approval, and adoption. So the Speaker of Parliament is basically the eye of the house. Now you can see that in every jurisdiction, you see the Speaker in the middle. Obviously, he's the pivot of the house. He's the attention of the house. Everything depends on him. So if the Speaker is not good, wahala. If the Speaker is good, business will be done. However, it's not everything that is bent on the speaker, but the speaker, the strength of the speaker, the quality and competence of the speaker is basically contributes to 65% of the success of the house. Yeah. So members of parliament, members of parliament are the elected representatives. This is with respect to Republican parliament. They are the elected representatives from political demarcations within the territory of that republic. With respect to student governance, our MPs are most at times, they become MPs per offices that they are holding. SRCs, departmental presidents, college presidents, and general secretaries, and then all those SRC committee chairs, they are the people who become the members of our parliament. And you can best refer to them as ex officio because they qualify as members of parliament for the position that they are holding. They qualify as members of parliament for the position that they are holding. Yes. So for Republican parliaments, they are elected at court, um, their constituencies. And most of the times, they come majority of the times they are elected on party tickets but when you go to kenya they have some mps who are appointed by the president based on you some of them are appointed by civil society and then it makes room for composing number of women to be elected so those ones they are elected differently and then some even make room for disabled people to be members of parliament and if you go to the House of Lords, as I told you, bishops, dukes, duchies, deacons, uh, not deacons, barons and baronesses, they are all lords. They are part of the upper chamber. So it depends on how the constitution states. So that is it for members of parliament. Members of parliament are the decision makers. You as the speaker, your role is to preside. You must avoid taking interest in matters. Because if you take interest in matters, you would want to add your voice and then others. Whatever you say on floor should be to resolve matters and not to stir up argument and even make matters worse. As far as possible, the speaker should avoid generating interest in matters discussed on floor. Your job is to preside, and that is the end. Your job is to preside, and that is the end. I'll come to that. Now let's talk about the relation between the legislature and other arms of government. You are all in the known that we have three arms of government worldwide, worldwide, everywhere. We have the executive arm, the legislative arm, and the judicial arm of government. The relation between these three arms is that the executive arm is the initiator and the implementer of policies, government policies, and all that. However, we need a body to pass laws and perform oversight responsibility on the executive. That body is the legislature, made up of representatives, lawmakers. So they serve as a check on government or the executive. So that is why you see leader of government business 
as the majority leader in some jurisdictions. And sometimes the leader of government business is the prime minister. The prime minister is a rep of the executive to ensure that executive business goes on. Parliament does not only do does not only do executive business or government business. They do private business as well. Those are the private motions and then all those initiatives coming from parliament themselves. Okay. So that is it basically. Now for the judiciary, the judicial arm, they are the custodians of the constitution. And in addition to that, adjudicators of disputes. Their job is to only sit down there and when disputes arise, they resolve them. They don't step into the picture until they are needed. That is the work of the judiciary. They don't step into the picture until they are needed. And that is the end of it. That is why in most jurisdictions, you don't see the chief justice being loud. For instance, in Ghana, the chief justice is not loud. But unfortunately, in Uganda, the chief justice is very loud. Everything, uh, chief justice must be done, then all this. But the judiciary must be silent until they are being called into the case. However, we realize that the highest authority, you know, the highest office holder in a republic is the president, but the highest body is parliament. Okay. So the highest office holder is the leader of the executive, but the highest body is the entire legislature and not just the speaker. The speaker is only privileged to lead that arm. Yes, but for the executive, the attention is the president. However, the president cannot do it alone. That is why he appoints ministers and then commissioners and then all those to aid him perform the job. Now, let's come to the main business of the day, sharing skills. Why is the speaker referred to as the pivot of the house? As I told you, about 65% of the progress of the house depends on the competency of the speaker. It's very, very true. You know why? If the speaker is not competent, the house will scarcely resolve or reach decision. You see, the house is made up of people of diverse cultures, diverse backgrounds, diverse and different professions. And you, as the speaker, has to guide all of them to reach a consensus. That is quite a difficult duty. The speaker is more or less, not like a judge, but we are more of, we are more of a unifier. You have to bring all these people to agree on one thing. And it is not an easy job. You, as the speaker, you must ensure that you have that reputation, respect an ability to influence. If you are a speaker, you don't have reputation, they don't respect you, how are you going to influence them? How are you going to influence them? The speaker must be a very influential person. That when you speak, they listen to you. You as the speaker must ensure that, of course, you cannot satisfy everyone, you cannot be a friend to everyone. But, let your standard be set. When you speak, they must listen. Please don't be a dictator, please. Not being a dictator. But I mean that influence must be there. Because when they respect you and you help them to reach a consensus, they will accept it. But when their respect and reputation is not there, they are more or less like wasting their time. So that is why the speaker needs parliamentary approval if it's nominated by the president. That is for his houses. The parliamentary approval is a vote of confidence by the members of that house that they trust in the speaker and they are ready to be led by the speaker. For Republican parliaments, the speaker is elected by simple majority of members of parliament and is a sign of vote of confidence in the speaker. So, in SRC parliaments, if the president brings a nominee for, for speaker and the person is not, they don't want to accept the person because they have seen a fundamental issue. They don't regard the person. 
that does not force that person on the house because that person will scarcely influence the house to perform his duty. So the speaker must be influential. Okay. Now, sharing skills. What are sharing skills? There are skills that you can adequately equip yourself with and aid you to make progress when you are sharing. What is sharing? It's basically presiding over meetings. The council chairman of uh, governing council of, of universities are basically speakers of those governing councils. And they need skills such as this and all that I'm telling you about. Presidents of the regional house and national house of chiefs are basically speakers. Chairman of council of states are basically speakers. Even ministers and chairs of boards, they are basically speakers because they use sharing skills. The only difference is that we don't enact law and then all those. That is why the, the real speakership is being seen in parliament. But sharing skills, even the president needs sharing skills to preside over cabinet. So sharing skills is universal and not only to speakers. Now, you'd ask, what are some of the sharing skills that you should equip yourself with? One of the sharing skills is how to speak when sharing. You see, you don't speak harsh when you are sharing. You, as the person sharing, should be seen as a motherly figure. Okay? The people must feel welcome and approachable. You must be approachable to them. They feel welcome in your arms. Because if they don't feel welcome in your house or in your arms, they will not respect whatever you say or do. Now, the matter is that this sharing skill, this sharing skill that you are talking about, you want them to reach a consensus, and you are yelling on them, you are insulting them. You are creating bitterness among them. Who is ready to listen to someone who just stands up and insults anyone he likes? That is disrespect, and they're not ready to listen to you. So rule number one, insults must be completely out of the picture. Never insult anyone. Number two, humility. You need to be humble. You see, a leader is a servant. But people, some, it's just so unfortunate that people think uh, leaders are now becoming bosses. No. They are the servants of the people. So you are there to serve them and serve their purpose. You cannot be the boss of them. They have your only privilege to lead them. That does not make you the boss of them. So you have to be humble. You have to see your MPs as the boss and give them that due respect. Respect is reciprocal. So you respect them, they respect you. It's just very simple. So respect your, your MPs. Number three, you have to be careful of your choice of words when presiding. I stated that in this an offer. But sometimes your choice of words can be very problematic. You see, we want the honorable member to wind up. You know, to come to a conclusion. You're like, hey, finish, finish, I'm tired. You know, why would you do that? You have been harsh. That is a strategy that uh, the former speaker, the speaker of the civil parliament of the Republic employs. I still use it. It's the honorable member. In conclusion, in conclusion, in doing so, he's basically uh, is basically helping them to come to an end, persuading them to come to an end. So you can use that when the person is speaking. I remember in conclusion. Now, another skill of sharing skill is that you protect the minority voices. There are some people, they like speaking in their house. 
they enjoy speaking power if you give them the floor for one hour they will keep those are the majority voices but the ones who scarcely speak you have to protect them that is why when someone is always speaking in the house and someone who have not spoken before raises his or her hand I want to listen to that person in doing so you are protecting the voice of the minority the beauty of parliament is that minority have their say, majority have their way. It means that allow the minority to express their views for majority to consider. It refines the entire argument. I'll teach you some other skills that helps with government business. Yes, but this is these are the general sharing skills. Now another issue is that. You as the speaker must not be too lenient. You see, when you are too lenient, the members will work on you. You have to have some standard or maybe some strictness. Yes, you are open to them. You are the motherly figure. But they cannot work on you. They cannot command you anyhow. An honorable member will just stand up and say, Mr. Speaker, move this person out. He's doing this, he's doing that. You will have to first understand why the person should be moved up. And in your opinion, if you think yes, you should move up, then you move them up. Not that they speak now, you are on the go. You are going to execute it. No. Yes, you want to listen to everyone. But you cannot listen to everyone. 275 members of parliament of Ghana. You think if all of them want to speak five minutes, five minutes, 24 hours, okay. Obviously not. As a speaker, you must know your MPs very well. The ones that do police talk, you don't call them often. The ones that talk sense, you call them when they are needed. You call people who can resolve issues and contribute sense. You don't just call everyone. Some people, even when they are speaking, and you know they are talking trash. I don't remember, well noted, resume your seat. Try to cut them short. <clears throat> another, another skill of a speaker is that you are interested in the house resolving the matter for you to close. That is why I stated that as a speaker, you shouldn't have interest in matters. Because when you have interest in matters, you want the thing to go on and then all those. But your interest is that let's come to a close. Let's finish this matter. Let's move on. I want the house to progress. That should be how a good speaker should think. You must not take interest in matters. Let's progress. So if someone is drawing the house back, a person is causing confusion, putting the house into disarray, you put that person to order. I remember, you are confusing the house. Resume your seat. Another thing that can help you, the speaker, is this question always asked. What is the solution? What is the way forward? Some people are fond of just expressing grievances on floor. They are fond of that. And you, as the speaker, you want solution. So when they are not giving it to honor member, we have heard you resume your seat. What is the way for honor members? What do we do? What do we do? That should be your aim. So these are some of the cheering skills. I'll talk about more of them when I'm talking about the art, uh, you know, the other things that I have to speak on. Now, you see. Um, interventional signs are everywhere. You have a question? Okay, ask it before you yes. forget. Okay, so um, the point you were saying that we should always ask them what is the way forward. Sometimes when you do ask, rather draws us back because people end up talking more every, like, they just talk, but they don't bring our solutions. So I think sometimes when we say certain things, we allow them on the platform there end up wasting more time and we keep more like hours on just one thing we want to resolve. So I don't know why. Very good. Sometimes you we feel like you should, you, should just, you should just, yes, you should just conclude. Because if you allow them, uh, everyone will say their opinion and some people try to counter the opinions to then you end up being in the middle, just wandering around. Yeah. Exactly. Thank you for drawing my attention to that. Yes, it's true. Mm -hmm. um, some people take advantage of the leniency of the speaker. You are asking for the way forward, they will not come and confuse you again. So you see, you have to be, you, you have to be on floor. Honor member, what are you saying? 
What is the solution? You are lamenting. What is the solution? If you don't have any solution, can you resume your seat? As a speaker, avoid unnecessary preambles. Some honor members like giving preambles a lot. Give us solution, submission. They are giving preamble. So you see those honor members, just, just put them on floor. Like, like you put them to task. What is the solution? When you are not getting any solution, you tell them to resume their seat. Yeah, you basically tell them to resume their seat. And then you see, you as the speaker, you must understand the business to be discussed before you chair. So that even before solutions or the house would agree, you already have a draft of possible solutions and resolutions the house can take. Okay. Not that you come, yes, sometimes you allow the house to determine its fate, but sometimes when the house is unable to determine its fate, you must project a fix for them to buy. So you must understand the business to be discussed, the possible controversies to emanate from it, and possible solutions you suggest to the house. So let's take this example. They have a budget and then they are saying, oh, the money is too much, the money is too much. And then on our members, what is the way for it? Then they'll be like, oh, this money... Oh, let's just yeah, confuse them. So, so you'll be like, I don't remember, if you claim that the money is too much, then let's go with 2,000. You said 50,000 is too much. So let's go with 2,000. Don't you like that? I don't remember, move a motion for that. So we are helping them to reach a resolution. Because some people are confused and they will not help you with the solution. So you, you yourself must anticipate controversies and possible solutions to help the house. Your, 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 your aim is that you want to help them reach a consensus. So if they are failing to reach, you have to put them on the path to a consensus by suggesting. You suggesting others will claim that you have an interest in the matter. But come on, they are not able to reach a solution. So you are, you are proposing a solution to them. So that is why you will not move a motion. On our members, I can see the house is completely confused about this. I think we should do it this way. How do you think? So then, oh, Mr. Speaker, yes, I think it is cool. Then, okay, so if you think it's cool, move the motion and let's move on. So that is how you deal with those people. When they are bringing confusion, they are not bringing solution. You just help the house and then we move. We move, we move. Ensure that people don't talk too much on floor. When you know they're talking too much, we bring issue. Oh, no, remember, thank you. Or oh, in conclusion, you allow him to conclude and then hurt. And then, when, then all those. So that is it. I'll move on to the next item. Please, all of you have your questions down. Our interventional science, as I was saying, every house has their own procedure and then interventional science. But the common ones are the contribution, corrections, order, and then the follow-up. Yes, points of information. That is when the person wants to bring a new subject matter. When the person wants to bring a new subject matter under that same item on the other paper. I didn't even talk about other paper. I'll talk about that. And then correction. If he wants to correct a fact being laid on floor, he wants to correct an honorable member. And then follow up. He wants to contribute to hold the last contributor or the last maker of statements said on floor, or you want to contribute to the subject matter on floor. And then points of order. The person wants to put the house to order or an honor member to order. Yes, so those are basic interventional signs. And then if anyone wants to leave the house, they have to seek the permission of the speaker. They can raise their hand in all those. It varies. But these are some interventional signs. I want to speak on other paper Standing orders. I'll first talk about the national parliament, their documents, and then I'll talk about the student parliament. The national parliament has its own standing orders. The standing orders are the rules of procedure for managing the house. And the custodian of the standing order is the speaker. It is the speaker that has the right to interpret standing orders. Okay, it's the speaker that has the right to interpret standing orders. Now, the standing orders is an extension of the Constitution. It speaks clearly on the operations of Parliament, committees of Parliament, election of speaker, 
uh, how to pass bills, uh, rules of debate, and then all those functions of members of parliament. It's all that, and then they are all seated there. So it's more like the constitution of the house, but it's being called hot, standing order. Parliament, Parliament of Ghana, as you know, they serve for four years. A year is a session. And then a year is being broken into three meetings, three basic meetings. And then in each meeting, we have a sitting. Okay. So the basic element of, of a converging of a house is sitting. And there are sittings in sessions, uh, in meetings, and meetings in sections, and sections of parliaments. Uh, is this sessions, not sessions? Yes, sessions, not sections. It's sessions. So you, that is how you can be, around, and then, you, yes, exactly. And then you hear me putting on the speaker's page, parliament is having the fifth, parliament is having the fifth sitting of the second meeting of the first session of the eighth parliament. Yes, that is basically what goes on with respect to that. And as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, parliament has agenda for a meeting and they have other paper for sittings. Every meeting that parliament will have, they, they share the agenda. The agenda contains the bills to be passed, questions to be asked, motions to be moved, and government business to be transacted. Those are the agenda for the meeting. Okay. And then the sitting contains the business to be transacted at that sitting. Now, a sitting does not extend over a day. When that day ends, it's basically a dana, another sitting going on. But it appears for SRC, they want to hold sittings for 23 hours. Now, let's come to SRC. You know, SRC is just one year, and student government is just one year. So, your sessions can be should be semester. And then you should not have meetings, okay? You should have sittings. So sittings in sessions and sessions of a parliament. That should be how you guys should have it. Because parliaments can have as much as 40 sittings in a meeting. Yes, they can have as much as 40 sittings in a meeting. But how often do, do student parliaments meet? Not that often. It's not that often that they meet. So that is how you guys should have it. So the other paper, what are some of the businesses that should be on the other paper? But obviously, a prayer has to be said. And clearly from the best practices, the prayer is not prayed, it's read. It's a particular prayer that per the standing orders, the speaker has to read it. And let me state it clear. There is no prayer after adjournment. When the house is adjourning, the house does not pray. It is only at the starting. And then this is the prayer that uh, Parliament has. I'm reciting it is in my head though. But not that man. Let me just recite the first paragraph. It says, mm -hmm. so when you're about to start a sitting and you process in, then you come. Honorable members, prayers. Almighty God, we humbly beseech thee to look with favor upon this parliament of the republic. Grant that it may perform its high duty as in thy sight. Give divine guidance to the president of the republic and thou members of parliament with discernment and vision, integrity and courage that through the labors of this government, this land and people may be all and truly served, and there are good purposes for the common human life be realized in our midst. Amen. That is just the first paragraph. The second paragraph is there. So that prayer is available. We can customize it for each of your chambers, and you should have it, and you should read it at the start. You are not, you are reading the prayer also, please. You are reading the prayer. It's there, and it must always be read at the start. Right after that, the next item on the other paper is communication from the president. And after that, we have communication from the speaker. 
and then after that you go to private business private business includes questions to ministers in parliament of ghana private motions and statements petitions those are private business and then the next one is public business laying of papers committee papers readings of bills consideration stage passing of bills uh, and then all those instruments and then any other government business those are public business but in the student domain you guys does not necessarily need you know how you guys call um, any other matters that is actually private business in parliament you guys have it as any other matters and then you actually have any other matters after the business of the day for src practices you should go straight to the business of the day which is the executive business approval of reports approval of appointees and then all those you have all that so for your other papers please they are not called agenda they are called other papers for sitting and please when you guys are meeting you don't call it meeting they are sitting because that is the basic unit of a convergence of a house so they are sitting sitting other paper okay and i've seen one like sitting meeting what is that please don't do that is that sitting okay that is it basically now um you heard me talking about motions and be like what are motions yeah so motions are more of proposals a motion is a proposal and then you know motions are seconded so a second so a, a secondment is a confirmation to the motion or a support to that motion now you see when a motion is moved and seconded is the house has to decide so when a motion is moved and seconded and then bam, you move on you are ripping the house or let me say you are skipping an important functionality of the house you have to give an opportunity for the house to affirm that they support the motion being moved and it be seconded now how do you do that it's called voting the house has to vote on it so the house basically has three ways of voting the first way is um, voice vote voice vote and it's very simple when someone has moved the motion and seconded then you'll be like honorable members motion moved and seconded i now put the question to the house all honorable members in favor say aye not in favor say nay in your opinion when the eyes have it honorable members the eyes have it the motion carries therefore this motion has been accordingly adopted by the house then you bank the gavel okay that is how that first type of voting is being done the voice vote is a question because you, you have to ask a question for them to give you a reply that is why you hear them say i now put the question to the house the question is all oh, members in favor say i not in favor say me it's a question so let me state that it is at the discretion of the speaker to declare what he has heard as a result one of the tricks of being a speaker and working in favor of your president is that yes the house can say nay but you say the eyes have it you are not wrong you can claim that word you heard this <laughs> you are not wrong as a matter of fact you are not wrong yes it will kind of show that you are you are being unfair because logically the you know the nays had it but you the eyes have it you are not wrong per the order per the standing orders how they have to do is a member of parliament feels so what he has heard and what the speaker has said are different so what they have to do is to challenge the rulings of the speaker by calling for a division 
and calling for division is it means division is just for the voice votes to be taken again and if it is still not in favor then they go for the second method so now the second method of voting can be hot head count or counting of hands or persons that one is not secret voting that one is public voting because they know who is voting for the eyes the eyes and who is voting for the days please it's not i o is a y e i and then the days is n a y most of the time people don't like the public if it's a very controversial matter then you go to the third type of voting that is secret balloting the ballots they do like normal election the ballots on that particular matter and that is the third part and for that one there you can lie whatever is the result for the second and the third you just declare it but for the voice vote you can take advantage over there and declare in favor but please your reputation so please it is where the eyes and the days are all of them sound similar then you can choose your own but when it is obvious that the eyes have it please just give it to the eyes and remember the eyes have it the motion carries therefore this house has accordingly accepted the motion if the nays have on our members the nays have it the motion does not carry therefore this house has rejected the motion you get it so those are the rulings and it's important after every ruling you bang the gavel i'll get to the gavel and then all those now the rulings of the speaker the rulings of the speaker are precedents and they are like laws it's just like judicial precedents the rulings of the speaker are conventions of the house so when you you know you see when a matter is very controversial when a motion is moved let me state it on record when a motion is moved the house has to reach a determination this is for you putting the question on whatever motion has been put forth unless the motion has a preliminary objection that you rule it out but when no preliminary objection is being raised you go and then you call for the you put the question on it but when the matter no motion has moved on it you the speaker can rule on the matter so as you mean they are saying on they are saying the honor member is not dressed well and you you feel the person is dressed well you can honor member honor members the member in question is properly dressed therefore i rule that he remains in the house then you bang the gavel there there is a controversial matter on the floor and they have not moved the motion they can go ahead and make and make a ruling on the honor members the subject matter or the situation in question does not relate to what we are discussing therefore honor members you are moving on with the business of the day i therefore rule that the house will not debate on this then you bank then you move on these are rulings of the speaker and then they become more of not laws of the house but they are conventions and precedents okay so the rulings you must be very careful in and your rulings must solve the issue must resolve the issues however your rulings can equally be challenged but they have to be challenged through a motion to rescind your ruling the speaker as well can withdraw his ruling but the speaker cannot withdraw a determination without a motion for rescindment okay but you can withdraw your rulings So when it is a motion being moved if you want to change the result they have to move a motion for rescindment okay I have to move a motion for rescindment before now let me talk on motions now motions are basically um as i told you proposing and then orders we have two basic types we have um, procedural motions and private motions the procedural motions are the motions that are relevant for the business of the day to be transacted a motion like adoption of other paper a motion like a motion to approve the report by this and that those are procedural motions a motion to adjourn the house motion for the house to suspend those are procedural motions but the private motions are the motions that are not really part of the business of the day but maybe are necessary for something to be done Uh uh-huh. so those private motions you can allow them to move them but if you feel the motion is not qualified or maybe will bring controversies you can rule that motion out 
motions can be amended. Someone can move a private motion or a procedural motion for this, and the motion can be amended. So when the motion is moved and seconded, the motion can be counted. That is a counter motion. But when a motion is moved and seconded, it can be amended by another person. But the, per the original mover of the motion has to second it, which means he concurs to the amendment of that particular motion. Okay. But when it is the mover that is amending it, another person can second. But when it is not the mover that is amending the motion, it is the person who moved the motion, the original motion, who has to second. Another person can counter. When a counter motion is moved and seconded, when it is when the counter the counter motions are basically turning a different lane. So if it is more of a yes or no one, someone is moving a motion. You see, how people don't know is that instead of moving a counter motion, you can just vote nay on the matter. But on our members who can't move like we counter the motion for the reject for the reports to be rejected. So the simple thing is for the questions to be put. When the counter motion is basically opposite, there is no need for a counter motion. You just go ahead and they say nay to that motion. And when the nays have it, the nays have it. No need to move a counter motion. But when the counter motion is in a different direction altogether and not opposite to the original motion, but however counters the original motion in nature, you can perhaps call for balloting or head count, because these are two separate motions. When nominations are made, they have to be seconded. Nominations from the president are already seconded, but nominations from honor members for someone to be part of this and that has to be seconded. And bear in mind, you have to ask the person being nominated if he accepts his nomination before you go. So that, that is on motions. Now, let me speak on Mace, mace, gavel, and rope. I decided to wear the robe of the Speaker of Youth Impact Parliament for this training. And that is the robe that I'm wearing right now. If you go to Youth Impact Parliament on Facebook, you see the robe in entirety. The robe is a different component of the parliamentary practice. The robe is being worn by Speaker, Deputy Speakers, clerk and deputy clerks. Please, you don't have anything called chief clerk. Because if you have a chief clerk, there must be an original clerk for someone to be chief of that original clerk. So you can't have chief clerk and then you move straight to deputy clerks. No, that is even logically wrong. So student parliaments have been doing that. You should stop that. Then if, if that be the case, you have chief speaker and speaker before deputy speakers. Okay. So the robe is being worn by the speaker, deputy speakers, clerk, and deputy clerks. The speaker's robe must be the most attractive because that the speaker is that is the center of attention. The clerk's robe should not be so much attractive, but they can also be group. Commentary robes are the ones that even uh, universities have for their principal offices. They have a panel. This is a panel. It's more like an extension to the robe. And then uh, parliamentary robes don't come inside like this. No, they just go straight for your suit to show. And it's best when you wear suit on robes. It looks very nice seeing the ingredients, the time, then all the right there. Okay. So that is it basically. If you don't have good robes, I have a designer. I, I design robes myself. And then equally, I have a tailor who sees them. So you can contact me. So they kind of give a signal of who is wearing the robe. So the most decorated robe should always be worn by the speaker and gives a signal that that's, that's probably the speaker. The wearing of the robe is more of a sign of neutrality. Okay. It's another sign of neutrality. Uh -huh. Apart from just the attention, it's another sign of neutrality. <clears throat> so robes should be worn and it should be standard and when your robe is very nice you always look handsome in it the right honorable speaker of 
parliament, the hip parliament, right on about Alban's manner, but I really like his work. And then the deputy speakers, the Honorable Joseph Osei, who's the first deputy, and then Honorable Andrew Asiyama, the second deputy, their robes are also nice. Yes, yeah, so you guys should try and get good robes. The second one, base. The base is a symbol of authority of the house. Whenever the house is in plenary session, proceedings are ongoing. In Ghana, the maze is outstanding, treated as facing the top. In other parliaments, the maze is lying and facing the majority side of the house. That is other parliaments. Mm -hmm. The maze is lying and facing the majority side of the house. But for Ghana, the maze is outstanding. Whenever we are holding states of the nation's address, the base is facing the president in recognition of the highest authority of the land in the chamber. So the base, the designs are golden. They are not that tall. I think they are around five feet or four feet. Yes, I've been seeing student parliament maces, they are seven feet and all this. Come on. It should just be four feet or five feet. It's a symbol of the authority of the house. Whenever the maze is missing, it's more like an informal station. <coughs> now, gavels. The gavel is the symbol of authority of the presiding officer. The gavel, there is a usage for the gavel. You know the gavel, that's the hammer-like object that the speaker has been using to be used in fact, honorable members order. Yes, honorable members order. That is the gavel. You, after a question is being put and you make a declaration, you should always ban the gavel. Whenever you make a ruling, you should always ban the gavel. And when honorable members are making noise, honorable members, order! You can ban the gavel three times. One, two, three. As, as, as a signal that they are making noise. So, please, when honorable members are yelling in the house, honorable members, order! Order in the house. When there are too much international signs and you want to be heard in silence, you say, all oh, members, international science sees. And then you speak. Sometimes when the house is making noise, you should put them back and ensure that they are silent before you speak. That is another sign of command. So that is it for the gavel. Timber arrangements. You know, in Ghana, you can see on the screen. You can see on the screen right now. In Ghana's parliament, what Ghana has is the arc. This is the arc arrangement. Okay? That is the arc arrangement. When you go to other parliaments, like if you go to UK, they have the opposing benches. They have the opposing benches. If you go to Kenya, Kenya, they have a um, horseshoe. Okay, they have horseshoe. So that is it basically on um, timber arrangements. You can part parliament, we use we use the opposing benches. And then um, classroom arrangement. You understand classroom. All of them are facing the speaker. There is no swelling or siding and then any of that. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the timber arrangements. Try and change them once in the blue moon. And then Basically, to conclude, a house that does not reach resolution is not worth emulating. The role of the speaker is very important. You as the speaker should always ensure that business is being done. The house progress. That is what you want. You want progress. You want progression. So if the house is not moving, you, the speaker, should be sad. And you, the speakers, must also train your deputy speakers. If you don't train them, you wouldn't have rest because you have to sit throughout. You are a human being. I, for instance, my deputy speakers have been speakers before, so they know their job. But in apart from apart from that, I've trained them on some of the signs and then all this, and they do very well. You in back parliament, there's six, the seventh sitting was chaired by the first deputy, and eighth sitting was chaired by the second deputy. They all did very well. So I have trained my deputy speakers. You have to equally train your deputy speakers so that you can take rest. 
sometimes on the other paper, share the things. You to take some and let them take some. Then they'll be happy that they have also shared some more. But why you want to take everything? We're working against you. So at least for a particular day, ensure that maybe they take one or two items. When you have two deputy speakers, but when it's really one, let him take some items. Train them. You cannot sit in the chair and tally. Sometimes you receive calls, you will have to go and urinate or an urgent matter. So your deputy speaker should always be available for you. And whereas there is no deputy speaker, a member of parliament can act as a speaker until your return. So even when there are no deputy speakers, one of the good enemies that are there, can, you can let him cheer in your, in your temporal absence. And then you'll be good to go. That's Honorable Speaker of the UCC SRC Parliament. Thank you very much for the opportunity. I believe we are now open for questions. Yes, um, thank you very much, Right Honorable um, Jones Amegashi Viglo, for your presentation. Um, now, chance for honor, Right Honorable Speakers who want to ask questions. So you raise your hand and then I'll call you. Hello. Um okay. Yeah. Right to move Samira. Yes, please. My question. Samara. Samara, yes, please. My question is on previous reading of previous minutes. I didn't hear that. So, if uh, Right Honorable Jones can touch on that. Yes. Reading of <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, it appears I skipped that. So, even in Parliament of Ghana, uh, there are minutes are called votes and proceedings, and then the second one is uh, Hansard, official report. So the votes and proceedings contains the attendance and then the major business done. And then the Hansard contains the exact words spoken on floor of parliament. So what happens is that right after communication from the speaker and then president, the next item is to adopt the votes and proceedings an official report of the previous sitting in SRC is called minutes. That is the next thing that you should do is to adopt the votes and proceedings of the previous sitting. Now, in doing that, this one is very simple. You don't need it to be read. So you should share the votes and proceedings with members on WhatsApp or whatever before they come. So that when you come on our members, minutes for the second, maybe the to the minutes, page one, page two. Then when you read the last, honor members, matters are rising, page one. Then when they have issues, they raise it on that page. Then when they are done, honor members, as a matter of fact, no motion needs to be moved because that is what has transpired. So usually in Parliament, so can just honor members, in the absence of any submission, the votes and proceedings of, uh, 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 of this sitting are hereby records and evidence of proceedings of the said sitting and then he banks the government. But for student parliament, we allow for members to move motion and second it, then you put the question for them to move. So you don't read minutes, no. You don't have that time for minutes to be read. Just give it to all members ahead of time. And then when that day comes, you take it page by page, corrections and after corrections, then you take um, matters arising. So that is basically a minute. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Um, thank you. Thank you. I, I, I just noticed that uh, most of our members have just um, please any other question? Yes, please. I have a question, please. Yes, please proceed with your question. Um, All right, so... Can I... 
All right, so thank you, right honorable. Uh, my question is uh, who is in charge of the whole preparation of the other paper? Okay, thank you very much. I'll first take it from the national level. The national level for the preparation of other paper for a CP is the office of the clerk. They are the ones who prepare the other paper. In consultation with the speaker and inputs from the business committee. Because so the business committee presents business to be transacted in a week in their report. And from there, the clerk picks the business. That is for um, the national parliament for a sitting. But student parliament with the speaker should be the one to determine the business to be discussed. In consultation with the people who are coming, you know president has to present a report, FO has to present budget. Let them know that they are coming to present this at the next meeting. And then you put it in the other paper. Whoever will present it, let them know. Then you inform the clerk, and then the clerk will design it for you. Even when they are not able to design it, you can design it yourself and get it printed. So for student parliaments, the speaker should be responsible because you are the one coming to present. So you should know the business is discussed. But for national parliament, the other paper is being, pre is being prepared by the clerk in consultation with the speaker and inputs from the business committee. Thank you, very much. Thank you, sir. And the second one, to about the motion. Should the speaker also take up that tax or should uh, that should be by the business committee chairman? Um, how would, I don't really understand this question, but let me just answer it my way. The speaker cannot move any motion. You are the one presiding. Moving a motion is a is a demonstration of an interest in the matter. So you cannot move any motion. You have to allow your members of parliament to move the motion. Whether procedural or private, you the speaker cannot move any motion. You can advocate that they move a motion for business to be done. But you in person cannot move a motion, a procedural or private motion. Have I answered your question? Uh, not really. But, uh, yeah, on I the think you was trying. Okay. I think he was trying to ask uh, um, who presents or who draft the motion or yes, yes, yes oh, please. No. Was that what you meant? Um, yeah. Procedural motions are basically extracted from the business of the day. The items on the other paper determine the procedural motions. So you have budget by FO. The procedural motion is for is is, is that motion for the budget to be approved and seconded. That motion comes from the fact that that budget has been presented, a report by entertainment committee. The procedural motion is that the motion should be moved to approve the report of the entertainment committee. It's, it's, it's been extracted from the item. But the private motions is the members that will file them, and it is up to you to admit the motion or not. So okay. that if you have a business, the business committee cannot, for Parliament of Ghana, the speaker admits private motions and the business committee states when they should be asked and the clerk puts them in the other paper for a day. But for student parliaments, they will not tell you ahead the private motion that they are coming to move. It is on that day when session, when the proceedings are going on. So when you think the motion is qualified, you can admit it and it will be seconded. But if you think that private motion is not qualified, you can rule it out. Okay. Okay. All right, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah, welcome. Yeah. Mr. S. House Speaker, you have any question yourself? Uh, no, 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 please. No, please. Okay. How can it be possible? <laughs> <laughs> if, if I have questions, it means I always fall in his DM. Yes. So. <laughs> no, we also okay, want to benefit. Are you asking questions yeah. as in motion or? Oh, no, Any no, no. Question. So um, I'm coming. The question in there is kind of big. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> is 
Okay, so um, yeah. let me permit me to um, throw light on Gibson's um, question. That is whether the speaker himself drafts um, motions and the preparation involved and everything. Uh, I want to drop you from national level but blend it with students' affairs. That is, when you look at the student affair, it will be very difficult if we push everything on the speaker or just the majority leader. So most often in UCC, what we do is that we leave that to the business committee. And the clerk to parliament is not a member of the business committee, but she's always, he or she is always added to the platform of the, of the business committee. She takes part in everything that they do. So if there is any discussion, because it's the clerk that's supposed to prepare everything and send out, but the clerk is not well equipped to do all those things and she doesn't have the resources. So she does all those things with the business committee and then later send, they send it to the uh, speaker for approval. So when the speaker is done, they send it back to the business committee and the business committee issues it. in the name of the clerk. So that's what we usually do here. Okay. Yeah, ATU SRC speaker, right now with someone at the what do you do with respect to preparation of other people? Oh, okay. Um I meet with the president, then we discuss on issues or matters arising then. We draft everything with a click. So that's how we do it. Yes. Oh, okay. We look at the uh, emergency matters. We don't just like this. So, like, maybe we feel like talking about anything. We just see today we are going to have a sitting on this. No, we just look at our calendar and see the things that need to be attended to. And then we draft a motion on that. So, that's what we do. So, is the, the president, the speaker, and the clerk, then sometimes the deputy. Last one. Yes. Any other questions? Uh, last question. Okay. But this is out of the box. Um, I think there was a time I was looking for the ATL. Uh, sorry, um, ATU speaker in con um, in relation to Mr. Mohammed. But unfortunately, okay. I wasn't able to. Find him and God be so good. She's here, so I'll be glad if she can. Um, if we can exchange contact after here, I don't know how we'll be able to do that, though. No problem. You've been, link her you've been looking you. for me, you've been looking yeah. for me. Eh? Yeah, maybe <laughs> I'm not in Ghana. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, sure, no problem. Um, so, um, I think if, if that was all the question, uh, I'm sorry, if you could mute hey, no, your no, mic. No, 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 let me worry you. Okay. Nice. Okay. Okay. So, Mate, do you have any question? Yes, I was come to worry you concerning and swearing in of the ordinary chamber committee, like the people, the committee. Swearing in um, of committee members. Yes, for the uh, ordinary chamber. Which one to be ordinary chamber? You see, you mean the... so I don't know. Uh, yes, you see, uh, for a, uh, how do you call it? The CJ, they have two chambers. That's what uh, the appellate and the ordinary. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. Yes. Um, uh -huh. I think your constitution might not stipulate and I don't know what your practice is. But in Ghana, justices have been sworn in by the president. In HTU, it's the chief justice that swears in 
uh, the justices. Hmm. If for HT, they leave all the swearing to the chief justice, because that's where you get, that's where you, he can also perform some duty. So uh, he's swearing everyone in the SRC for HTU. But in Ghana, is the president that swearing the justices of High Court Appeal Supreme Court. Even the chief justice is the president that swears them. Oh, okay. So then I don't know because uh, on the motion oh. they've written um, swearing in of the uh, ordinary <laughs> chamber members. So I'm I think of whether I'm the one going to do that or CG, the chief justice. I, I think the chief justice should be given the opportunity to swear in swear his own members members. of the ordinary chamber and athletes. Mm. I think the chief justice should do that. Uh, then, okay, then I don't need to spend there as a G members. No, I mean, to be done is part of the business of the day, right? Yes. So you only invite the chief justice and the people to be sworn in and chief justice to do his job. Oh, right. Okay, thank you. Wow. Thank you. Welcome. So I guess that's all the questions, right? Okay, so I'll, I'll give, yes, I'll, I'll give my closing remarks, and then the right honourable speaker of the ECCS Parliamentary Council will give his and close the meeting for us. So, um, honourable members, being a speaker is really fun because you get an opportunity to lead people, different people with, you know, with, with from different backgrounds. And they give you that due respect if you do your job well. Um, one thing I'm not happy about is SRC Parliament spend a lot of time at proceedings. They can be seated there for 10 hours, 12 hours, 15 hours for just some small allowance. What is your problem? Very true and very sad. Uh, even Parliament of Ghana is designated to sit from 10 a.m. in the phone to 2 p.m. For ordinary, let me say, for usual sitting hours. The longest I've seen them sitting is 10 hours. But SLC Chamber will sit 11 a.m. today and close 10 a.m. tomorrow. 23 hours. So I, you want to kill yourself because of SLC business. I want to advocate that SLC parliaments and all, the, all other parliaments should learn to close business and adjourn the house after eight hours of proceedings. Because you are human beings, come on. Fatigue will worry you. I don't know what you gain from having long hours of proceedings. If in Parliament, the longest you have ever sat was four hours. The debate was zooming, but no, we will not persist after four hours. We record our sessions. So the, for you in Parliament, you don't sit more than four hours. You don't sit more than four hours. And I think SLC, by eight hours, the speaker should firstly adjourn the house and continue the next day. You don't kill yourself because of SRC business. When you be very, very tired, honorable members will not come and rescue you. It is your chamber. So the honorable members, we have been seated for eight hours now, and I'm tired. I am adjourning the house, and we'll meet tomorrow, 10 a.m. in the forenoon. Please do so. Because... When you see 23 hours, most of the times, they are not even able to reach any resolution. They just waste time talking, 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 talking. A speaker that is very efficient should be able to finish business of the day within eight hours. That one said it's too much. <coughs> Six hours. You should finish the business for that day. So I'm appealing to all SLC speakers and all other student government and then all those speakers. To ensure that sittings don't persist more than eight hours. When it is after eight hours, and amazingly, the main business or the controversial business have not been dealt with, please adjourn the house to the next day. Just adjourn it to the next day. They will find, they will come. They will come. The finance officer will be like, oh, we don't have time, we don't have money to pay for sitting allowance. Tell them that you will split it into two. They take half if you come before the first, then half for the second. You can't kill yourself, so please. That is my advocacy. SRC Parliament should stop sitting for more than eight hours. 
after eight hours of proceedings, you go and adjourn the house forcefully. There is nothing they can do to you. In fact, in Parliament of Ghana, when the house wishes to adjourn out of the ordinary hours, a motion has to be moved. But if it is after two o'clock, which is which is not the usual hours of sitting, the speaker can adjourn the house without any motion. So after eight hours, when you adjourn the house without any motion, sir, there is nothing to do. And then another correction I'd like to give is that recess is adjournment made in Ghana. Okay, I know where they pick the recess from. At the House of Representatives of U.S. Congress, they call their suspension recess. But in Ghana, recess is adjournment sine die. Adjournment sine die is Parliament not knowing when next to meet. That is usually when you are going from one meeting to another meeting, or one session to another session. They are adjourned sine die. Even dissolution is still adjournment sine die. Yes. So please, when you are just breaking for some few minutes, either to attend to a business or for refreshment, you suspend the house. You can suspend without motion, or you can suspend with motion. Okay? So please, let us know that difference. Then I wish you all, I'm always available. Youth Impact Parliament is open. Go to Facebook, and you can check what we do, Youth Impact Parliament. And then, I'm always open. Nasdaq is also there and ready. You can contact us. Anytime you have an issue presiding, contact me. I'm always there, and then I'll aid you. I'm John Samagas with Blue once again, Speaker of Youth Impact Parliament and Chairman of National Association of Students with the Ghana. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you very much, right, Honorable Jones. Um, I'm a guy to Glow for Bye. helping us hey. through um, this list of lessons. <laughs> Tomorrow we'll continue with um, different speakers. Tomorrow we'll have um, right on our wall, Sham, speaker from KUST, being in our midst. Thank you all for um, being here. Those who came in and left, um, thank you all. Thank you all. Yeah. So I think in the absence of further discussions, this meeting um, will end now. Yes. Uh, All right, and then right now we'll send Right, Honorable Jones. Yeah. I think you sent me the link. Yes, I'm done with yeah, them now. Yeah. Sure.